So accounts receivable. So for accounts receivable, the question is, what is an accounts receivable? Usually, yung accounts receivable is a trade receivable. Meaning, referring lang sa mga customers. But there are also instances in mga, sa mga problem solving that there are accounts receivable from employees. Like that. Okay? Or sasabihin sa problem solving, trade accounts receivable dash officers. Or trade receivables dash employees. Pwede din yun. As long as may designation na trade. But for accounts receivable, yung account talaga na accounts receivable, okay, these are referring to open credit okay, transaction with customers. Usually when we are engaged into trading or selling or sale of goods or services. So accounts receivable on the part of the seller, those are receivables arising from open credit with customers. So umuutang si customer from the seller. Yun lang ibig sabihin niyan. Open credit. Why open credit? Because accounts receivable, wala siyang, wala siyang evidence. Walang, wal, uh, walang kasulatan. Parang ganun. Okay? In contrast with uh, no receivable, no receivable, we have an evidence with, uh, with no receivable. We have the promissory note. Okay? But for accounts receivable, word of mouth. Okay? The characteristics of an account receivable, again, open credit with customers, usually unsecured type. Unsecured because wala kang paper or any evidences that will uh, provide you with uh, like proof na meron kang receivable from that entity. Then usually related to trading or buy and sell activities. Accounting measurement, since trade, uh, trade yung account receivable, account receivable are usually short term. Okay? It is considered uh, measured at face value. Yung ibig sabihin naman ng face value for account receivable is the original invoice price. Ibig sabihin yung price na nandun sa billing statement. Okay? Yung nandun sa billing statement. Accounts receivable arises from credit sale or sale on account. Okay? Pag cash sale, wala kang accounts receivable dyan. But for credit sale or sale on account, yan, may accounts receivable ka dyan. Okay? The same with all other receivables. Accounts receivable is subsequently measured at amortized cost. Yung amortized cost for accounts receivable is considered net realizable value. Net realizable value. Ang ibig sabihin ng net realizable value, it is the initial measurement, which is the original invoice price, less collections and allowances for uncollectability, and the other adjustments, including right of due to worthlessness. Okay? So, yung, uh, to compute with the amortized cost, yung ibabawas mo sa original invoice price or sa initial measurement or initial amount will be yung collections, yung sinasabing allowances for uncollectibilities, then yung mga right of. Okay? Yung mga right of. So, next. Okay. To recognize uh, our accounts receivable, our journal entry is to debit accounts receivable and credit sales revenue. Okay, This entry actually indicates na yung ating sale is actually a sale on account or credit sale. Now, after recognizing accounts receivable, let's proceed naman sa computation ng balance ng ating accounts receivable. Okay? So below, meron tayong T-account ng ating accounts receivable. Yan. Okay? So we have on the debit side, we have yung uh, beginning balance kung meron. Then we have the credit sales which is associated with accounts receivable. Then we have the recoveries. Okay? Information for recoveries, ibig sabihin, uh, mga worthless accounts na tinanggal na natin sa record pero um, himala, 
na kolekta natin. So, yun yung recoveries. Okay? Then, on the credit side, meron naman tayo ditong collections. Okay? Collections could either exclude or include recoveries. So, dito, collections including recoveries. Since recoveries also encompasses collection of previously written of accounts. Then, we have credit memos for freight cost. Okay? Pag sinabi natin credit memos, because of the freight that we have shouldered, dapat, we should have shouldered uh, iba yung nag-shoulder sa freight na yan, tapos yung agreement is to credit uh, the account of that customer okay, na nag-shoulder ng uh, freight. Which means, babawasan na lang yung collectible mo dun sa customer na yun kung siya yung nag-shoulder ng freight instead na ikaw as seller. Then, credit memos for sales return, ibig sabihin pag merong actual return within the year. Na before nagkaroon ka ng collection, nagkaroon ng actual sales return, Binawa, binabawasan mo yung collectible mo dun sa uh, customer na yun. Then we have write-off. Pag sinabi natin write-off, nandyan yung uh, mga accounts na worthless o hindi na talaga makakollect. Okay? Then total all debits and all credits. Uh, kapag mas malaki yung um, debits kaysa sa uh, credits, ibig sabihin yung difference is the ending balance. Pero yung ginagawa actually dito is to balance out debits and credits kung ano yung amount ng debits, ganun din yung amount ng credits. Then, any difference, yun yung maging ending balance. By the way, yung ending balance, inilagay lang dito sa credit side in order to balance out debits and credits. Just take note that the account receivable is an asset. Therefore, yung kanyang um, normal balance is debit. Okay. So, next is to compute the net realizable value or the amortized cost value of an uh, accounts receivable. Okay. So, from the ending balance that we have uh, computed through the T-account, we can have uh, less from uh, that ending balance, the associated allowances for uncollectability for that accounts receivable. So, we have at least four common allowances. Okay. Uh, of which yung pinaka-common among, among the common yun, are uh, those with asterisk. Okay? So yung four nandiyan yung freight cost, sales discount, sales returns, and bad debts. Or mas kilala natin sa doubtful accounts. Okay? So yung mas common actually na nakikita natin sa mga problem solving sa mga books, we have yung sales returns and bad debts. Si sales discounts kasi at saka si freight cost, usually within the Ano siya, within the process of reconciling transactions. Pero si sales returns and bad debts, medyo nag extend pa siya beyond the uh, normal transactions. Ibig sabihin, pag within the year, meron nag-return, we still expect in the next accounting period na meron pang magkakaroon ng, uh, magkakaroon ng sales return from the customers okay, related sa sale ng current year. The same goes with but debts. Okay? So, yan. So, to apply the concept, let us proceed with this sample problem solving. Okay? Actually, meron na siyang solution ng that. Now, so, high-speed company had 130,000 opening balance of accounts receivable and disclosed the following transactions for the current year 2020. Yan. So, meron tayong mga transactions dito and mga information. Okay? So number one, sabi dito, the company sold merchandise to customers for total of 2 million on credit basis. Ibig sabihin, sale on account, so meron tayong accounts receivable dito. The credit term provides for 5, 10, and 30. Ibig sabihin, cash discount yan, may 5% cash discount pag nagbayad within 10 days at walang cash discount pag within 30 days. Okay? And also, beyond 30 days, wala nang uh, cash discount yan. Okay? So, if we're going to journalize yung 2 million, we debit accounts receivable and credit uh, sales revenue. Okay? Pero hindi ko na lang in-include dito sa solution natin because yung solution natin magbe-base tayo sa ating uh, requirements. Okay. Next, the company issued credit memo for total of 50,000 to customers who returned merchandise within the year. So, ibig sabihin meron na mga, nag, uh, mga customers na nag-return ng uh, merchandise na ibinenta sa kanila, okay? yung total lang lahat-lahat na yun is 50,000. 
20,000. So therefore, there's a credit memo babawasan ng ating accounts receivable. Okay? Then the company also issued a credit memo for total of 10,000 to a customer who agreed to shoulder the freight of the merchandise sold under FOB destination. The customer already, already received the merchandise during the year. Now, by the way, yung credit memo natin for the freight cost happens only if there is a sale under FOB destination. Kasi if you can recall sa basic accounting, FOB destination dapat tayo as seller yung responsible for paying the shipping or the freight cost. Okay? But because sometimes there are a lapses on, on our part or on the part of the seller na hindi na babayaran yung courier, yung ginagawa is to agree with the buyer to shoulder lang muna yung freight. Then afterwards, magkakaroon na lang ng credit memo. Ibig sabihin, babawasan yung collectible natin dun sa customer na yan. Okay? Then next, the company were able to collect uh, 1,175,000 cash, including those who availed the cash discount for a total of 25 so, ibig sabihin, yung total na na-receive natin out of the collection is 1,175,000. Okay? Kasama na daw dyan yung collection natin na merong kaakibat na discount na total of 25,000. So, ibig sabihin, yung 25,000 in-avail ng ilang customers. So, yung magiging total accounts receivable talaga na, na, na value na na-collect talaga natin is 1,175,000. Plus 25,000, that would be 1,200,000. Yun yung i-credit natin sa accounts receivable. Pero yung i-debit lang natin sa cash is uh, 1,175,000. So if you journalize natin si um, number 4, we debit cash 1,175,000. Uh, debit tayo ng sales discount na 25,000. Tsaka credit tayo ng accounts receivable for uh, 1,200,000. Okay. By the way, yung uh, sa number 2, yung journal entry natin dyan magiging uh, debit tayo ng sales return and credit tayo ng accounts receivable kasi may actual return naman. Same goes with uh, sa number 3. Meron tayong journal entry dyan. Magka-credit tayo ng accounts receivable for 10,000 tsaka credit, uh, debit tayo ng freight out because it is a selling expense on our part supposedly tayo yung magbabayad but an agreement with the customer uh, siya yung nag-shoulder ng 10,000 freight cost so debit freight cost okay or freight out delivery expense yan 10,000 at saka credit ng accounts receivable okay then sa number 5 sabi diyan the company determined 20,000 worth of customers accounts are worthless and needed to be written off. So may mga write-off. Ibig sabihin, hindi na talaga makukollect yung uh, accounts na yan, customer's account. So yung journal entry natin dyan will be um, debit to assuming allowance method yung ginagamit natin ha. Allowance for doubtful accounts or allowance for bad debt, sino yung debit for 20,000. Tsaka credit tayo ng accounts receivable. Okay? Yung ibang way naman to record the right of is to debit bad debt expense or doubtful accounts expense then credit accounts receivable that is under direct right of. Okay, direct right of. Pero yung sinusunod talaga natin usually which is yung gaap talaga is a debit to allowance account which is under the allowance method. Okay? Then last, number six, sabi dyan, the company needs to set up the following allowances for uncollectability. Okay? So meron tayo mga allowances other than na-mention sa itaas na actual crediting of accounts receivable. Yung allowances, hindi pa talaga siya i-credit directly to accounts receivable. Rather, there is an allowance for the uncollectability of that account receivable. So we have freight cost, sales return, Sales discount at saka doubtful accounts or yung bad debts. Okay? So yung requirement sa atin is to compute the balance of accounts receivable, then compute the net realizable value of accounts receivable, and prepare the required journal entries to set up the allowances. Okay? Now, yung solution natin to compute the ending balance of accounts receivable, pwede nating sundin yung T-account or pwede tayo mag... Um, 
simple mathematical operation. Add or less, add or less, ganyan. Okay? So, dito, prenesan ko lang dalawang solution. So, from beginning balance of 130,000, saan nakuha yan? Ito yan, yung opening balance. Add tayo ng credit sales na 2 million. Then, recoveries, zero, wala naman. So, walang information sa recoveries. So, therefore, zero siya. Then, uh, less tayo ng credit memo for fake cost, which is 10,000. Then, credit memo for sales return, which is the 50,000 earlier. Then, collections, 1,200,000. Bakit siya again naging 1,200,000? Kasi nga sa number 4, yung 1,175,000, debit yan sa cash. Then, another debit to 25,000, uh, for 25,000 for sales discount. So, yung total known is a credit to account receivable na 1,200,000. What we are after when we are computing for the balance of accounts receivable is the movement of the accounts receivable account itself. Okay? Okay. So, I hope nakuha niyo yun. Then, let's write off for 20,000. So, yung accounts receivable ending balance natin would be 850,000. Okay? So, if we're going to follow yung pinaka-T account niya, ganito yung maging itsura niyan. Okay, total the debits, total the credits. Any difference is the ending balance. Take note, nasa credit lang siya to balance out debits and credits. But the normal balance of accounts receivable is always debit. Okay. So may sagot na tayo sa requirement 1 which is 850,000. To proceed with the requirement 2, the net realizable value or the amortized cost value of our accounts receivable, we have it, okay, 850,000 bawasan lang ng lahat ng allowances from freight cost down to doubtful accounts or bad debts. Okay? So yan. Yung net realizable value natin, we have 730,000. Take note ha, take note yung common na nakikita natin sa mga problem solving na allowances, nandyan yung sales return and doubtful accounts or bad debts lang. Although, Again, take note, be careful of problem solving kasi nga, apat yung related allowances kay accounts receivable. Allowance for freight cost, which is a very rare. Allowance for sales discount, which is pwede rin rare or pwede rin maging common. Depende sa structure ng problem. Which is, yung pinaka-common naman, yung dalawa talaga. Yung sales return at saka yung doubtful accounts or bad debt. Okay? So again, our net realizable value would be 730,000. Okay? Kindly check the computations na lang. The next, we have the required journal entries to set, set up the allowances. So for the freight charge, at the journal entry, debit freight charges, which is delivered expense on our part as a seller. Then credit allowance for freight charges, 15,000. Sales returns naman, then, credit allowance for sales return for 25,000. Ayan, yan. Sales discount naman, debit. Credit allowance for sales discount for 10,000. Then, debit doubtful accounts expense or pwede namang bad debts expense. Then, credit allowance for doubtful accounts or bad debts okay, for 70,000. Okay? So, ito yung ating problem and our solution for uh, this related problem. So I hope nagets nyo, nagets nyo kung paano na compute yung mga amounts at paano na set up yung uh, journal entries to card for the allowances. Okay? So I hope nahabol doon. So let's proceed with accounting for credit sales which is related just accounts receivable. Okay? So accounting for credit sales, okay, Again, credit sales, yan yung transaction na associated si accounts receivable. Kasi si cash sale, wala namang accounts receivable doon. Direct yung cash yun, collection of cash. But for credit sale, mag-aarise muna si accounts receivable before further collection sa cash. So si credit sale, pwede natin siyang i-account. Okay? Sa mga books and other references, dalawa yung naka-mention doon. Gross method and net method. Pag sinabi natin gross method, Credit sales are recorded at transaction date at an amount before deducting any cash discount. So kanina, yung problem natin, yung example problem natin, yung, five, na, yung merong 5, 10, uh, and 30, pag gross method, hindi muna natin binabawas yung applicable 5% cash discount dun sa amount ng credit sale. 
Okay? Yan yung uh, application ni Gross Method. Kabalik tara naman si Net Method. Kasi si Net Method, sabi niya, credit sales are recorded at transaction date at an amount after deducting any cash discount. So yung difference on the accounting uh, under Gross Method at Net Method is on the consideration ng cash discount whether to deduct it or not at the date of transaction. Kasi the, yung succeeding uh, journal entries, which is related sa collection na ng accounts receivable, will depend sa initial journal entry natin under gross and net method. Okay? So, to differentiate the two methods, ayan, meron akong ditong summary. Okay? So, for under gross method, at the date of transaction, okay, recording of the credit sale, debit accounts receivable and credit sales revenue at a gross amount. Pero si net method, net amount na agad siya, ibig sabihin, binawas na yung cash discount. Dito sa gross method, hindi pa binawas. Okay? Then to record the collection within discount period, pag nag nagkaroon ng collection within discount period, may difference po sa journal entry si gross and net method. Okay? Of course, hindi sila magiging different method kung walang difference sa kanilang journal entries. Okay? Sa gross method, since we have debited accounts receivable at a gross amount, we have to credit it later on at still at a gross amount. But because merong availment ng discount because of collection within discount period, we debit cash at a net amount, which means after considering sales discount or the cash discount. So yung discount na yan, debit natin sa sales discount. Okay? But under net method, hindi na tayo magde-debit ng sales discount because in the first place, yung ating accounts receivable okay, was debited at a net amount. So, na-expect natin na yung buong amount na yan na naka-net, makukollect natin. Kaya debit tayo ng cash at a net amount. Okay? Again, bakit wala ng sales discount kasi naka-net amount na yung accounts receivable? Then, to record collection beyond discount period, ibig sabihin, pag nagkaroon tayo ng collections, uh, lagpas ng discount period or the period na pwede mag-avail yung customer ng cash discount. Under gross method, buong accounts receivable na nakagross, yun yung ating i-collect talaga from the customer. So, yung debit natin sa cash is really at a gross amount. Okay? Hindi tayo magdidilap ng sales discount kasi beyond discount period na. But under net method, because we have debited accounts receivable for uh, at a net amount, it is only proper to um, have another account, a suspense account or a temporary account that we're going to balance out the debits and credits for uh, journal entries under net method. Kasi take note, wala nang discount na maabil si customer. Therefore, our cash is debited at a full or gross amount. However, yung accounts receivable natin na naka-debit before, i-credit natin siya still at a net amount kasi net method eh. So ano yung ating balancing account? That would be a sales discount forfeited account. A sales discount forfeited account. Okay? So yung sales discount forfeited account, yung ibabalance natin dyan is the amount of the discount that was not Abated. Ano yung difference ng sales discount at saka ng sales discount for fitted account? Okay? Under gross method, yung sales discount, it is a contra sales account. Ibig sabihin ng contra sales account, okay? uh, si sales discount, binabawas natin siya to arrive with the, ne the net amount of sales that was earned for uh, the current period, okay? for a certain period. Pero si sales discount forfeited, although they are the same in the application of the amounts, kasi si sales discount dito, pwedeng maging equal yung kanyang amount sa sales discount forfeited. Assuming, assuming ha, assuming uh, lahat nag-avail or lahat hindi nag-avail ng discount. Pwedeng ganun yan. Okay? Si sales discount forfeited, yung difference lang talaga niya kay sales discount is that si sales discount forfeited, um, hindi siya contra sales account. It is treated rather as other revenue or other income. Okay? Kasi you are expecting to collect at a net amount. But since you have considered collecting the accounts receivable at a gross amount, 
and your sales revenue and your revenue rather at the moment of recording the credit sale naka net amount siya therefore madadagdagan yung revenue natin through the sales discount forfeited account again na sales discount account is um, a contra sales or revenue account contra revenue account si sales discount forfeited other income account yung treatment sa kanya. Okay? Then next to record for fitted discounts for uncollected accounts uh, beyond discount period, okay? Under gross method, wala tayong journal entry dyan kasi in the first place, hindi naman tayo nagre-record ng uh, sales sales discount kapag hindi pa nagko-collection. Okay? Pero under net method, since binabawas agad natin yung discount upon uh, recognizing the revenue on the accounts receivable at the date of transaction kasi at a net amount agad pag nagkaroon ng lapse okay, lumagpas na ng discount period wala pang nakokolekta or merong portion ng accounts receivable na hindi na collect within discount period tapos hindi pa uh, hindi pa yan nakokolekt even beyond the discount period okay Pag wala pang collections, yung ginagawa is to uh, forfeit automatically the available cash discount. Okay? Dinadagdagan natin yung ating account receivable na naka-net amount. Okay? Parang nare-reconcile na natin siya na parang nagiging gross yung account receivable natin. Okay? Then credit tayo ng sales discount for forfeited. Again, it is uh, hindi siya hindi siya uh, contra revenue rather it is an adjunct to the revenue okay sales discount forfeited is other income or other revenue at uh, account treatment so let us apply this in a problem solving Ayan. high speed companies sold to customers on account amounting to total of 700,000 on December 1 2020 yung credit term is 5% daw yung cash discount pang nagbuy within 15 days at walang cash discount pag nagbayad within 30 or beyond 30 days. The company is deciding whether to account the transaction under gross or net method. The accountant has been assigned to prepare the journal entries under both methods. Okay? So in journal, uh, yung requirement sa atin is to prepare journal entries under both methods, assuming yung mga transactions 1 to 4, okay? mag-record tayo ng credit sale transaction, merong payment ng buong 700,000 within 15 days at saka meron namang buong collection ng 700,000 beyond 15 days at saka assuming merong forfeit uh, forfeitment of uh, the cash discount okay so so kung isusolve natin okay 700,000 yung applicable cash discount natin is 35 thousand okay so kindly solve if you want 700,000 times 5% yung applicable cash discount natin towards uh, customers natin na pwede lang i-avail will be 35,000 so how do we journalize this one okay so to record the credit sale at December 1 2020 under gross method naka full amount siya na 700,000 but under net method, naka, naka net amount siya na 665,000. Kung pagbabasihan natin yung difference, that would be the cash discount of 35,000. So 700,000 minus 665,000, that would be 35,000. Now, let's proceed with the collection. Assuming yung buong 700,000, makukollect natin siya within 15 days. So therefore, merong discount na ma-avail yung customers. Under gross method, we credit the accounts receivable previously debit, debited at 700,000 gross amount. Yung magiging debit natin sa cash since merong availment ng cash discount, so debit tayo ng cash at a net amount of 665,000. The difference with is, which is the availed cash discount, debit tayo ng sales discount na 35,000. But under net method, wala tayong sales discount account na i-debit. Because in the first place, yung account receivable, naka-debit na at net amount na 665,000. Okay? So yan yung difference nila. Another 
to record the collection beyond 15 days but within 30 days. Okay? So, hindi pa siya naglalagpas ng 30 days. Okay? Ibig sabihin na collect pa rin siya within 30 days but beyond na ng 15 days. Under gross method, wala na tayong sales discount na record because we have to collect the accounts receivable at the full amount of 700,000. But under net method, kung mapapansin nyo, yung debit natin is uh, 700,000 na cash. Okay? That is because hindi na mag-avail ng cash discount si customer. So yung proper dyan is to credit yung accounts receivable natin, which is previously debited sa 665,000, yun pa rin yung i-credit natin. Na yung magiging balancing figure dyan is the sales discount forfeited na 35,000. Kung mapapansin nyo, yung sales discount dito, pag within 15 days, is equal sa 35,000 na nandito sa sales discount for 15. This is in the assumption ha, na yung buong receivable natin or yung accounts receivable natin is makokollect na talaga. Okay? In the actual practice, magdi-differ yung mga amounts dyan, okay, in both method, kung ilang accounts receivable lang yung makokollect natin okay, in a specific period. Okay? Pero ito yung uh, reflection on how do we apply gross method and net method. Dito si sales discount na 35,000 contra revenue account siya, which is yung sales revenue natin. Pero si sales discount forfeited is treated as okay, other income or other revenue account. So hindi siya... Um, Contra revenue. Rather, parang ano pa siya? Adjunct sa revenue natin. Okay? Then, to record the forfeited cash discount if no payment from customers after 30 days, ibig sabihin, wala talagang nagbayad okay, within the 30-day collection period, automatic forfeited na yung sales discount. Pero, under gross method, wala tayong journal entry dyan. Yung may journal entry lang tayo is sa net method. Yung purpose ng journal entry is to adjust the receivable. That's why meron tayong debit na accounts receivable, 35,000, to gross up our accounts receivable because of the forfeitment of cash discount. Then, yung ating balancing credit is the sales discount forfeited account na 35,000. Assuming lang naman, hindi nagkaroon ng collections within 30 days. Okay? So, yan. So, I hope nasundan yung ating problem solving. Okay? Dalawa yun. So, kanina, uh, related sa balance ng accounts receivable, and dito naman, related sa accounting ating credit sales. Okay? So, that's it.